the platform. Step up and, and speak out. You're tuning to ZFM Stereo, my station, your station, the hottest radio in town. My name is Larry Quitera, and uh, apologies for the delay to the program that is the platform. We just had uh, slight difficulties here, but I've uh, sorted that out, and uh, we should be going into the program now. In fact, we are going into the program right now. And uh, today, it's a, it's, a, it's a hot edition of the platform. And judging from reactions on social media, uh, there is a lot of interest in this topic. It's a topic that has uh, captured the imagination of the whole country uh, in as far as this situ- in, uh, or the different situations uh, are in as far as this political party is concerned. But before I tell you uh, about who I have in the studio and what we're talking about, uh, just remind you of the frequencies you can listen to us Chivu 99.8 Pipe Bridge 106.1 Nyanga 98.2 Weru 104.3 Walawaya 106.7 that is my hometown and Harare 106.4 listen to us over the internet that's www.zfmstereo.co.zw and also you can find us uh, via the TuneIn app just download it for free from whatever platform you use in as far as downloading apps and then look for ZFM Stereo listen to us live and in charge uh, follow us on, on Twitter at ZFM FM Stereo, like our Facebook face, uh, space Facebook page rather, uh, facebook.com forward slash ZFM Stereo, and also just uh, go to our Instagram, which is at ZFM Stereo ZW, and uh, of course on our social media. Uh, and as far as this show is concerned, you can listen to us, uh, and as far uh, on um, on uh, you can listen to us on YouTube uh, the day after this program and look for, if you've missed the program then you can listen to us there uh, our WhatsApp line number is open it's 0731168045 get your messages coming in but to give you the topic is uh, Dr. Togo Zanukupe who was fired from the NDCT by the Chamisa faction over the uh, over the weekend held its extra, um, extraordinary congress that is the faction that she holds uh, to help uh, us unpack these issues is uh, the Togo, Togo Zanukupe led NDCT uh, MDCT faction, newly elected spokesperson uh, on the phone, uh, Linda Masada. Uh, welcome to the program. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you very much, Larry. Okay. I hope my voice is audible because I've got a cold. Um, how are you, viewers? I mean, listeners. Thank you very much for inviting me to the program. And also in the studio, I've got uh, Mr. Gilbert Kagodora, who is uh, the national executive member for the M- uh, MDC. It was an executive, a national executive member uh, from the MDC, led by uh, advocate Nelson Chamisa. Linda is currently below, as I said, and we have her on the line. And uh, I'm going to start straight, start off first of all with uh, Linda on the phone. First of all, congratulations on your new position. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Larry. You're welcome. And then uh, today you were in court over the use of the name MDCT. What is the outcome of what, what happened today? The court is on tomorrow at uh, Blawayo High Court. It wasn't today. So we're actually going into court tomorrow. Okay, we're well, under the impression that it was given today. But then, moving forward, and as far as that concern, I hope we can get in touch with you to get update on this uh, about uh, tomorrow. But uh, people may be interested in knowing whether you are still standing as an independent can- independent candidate to the upcoming elections. What is the official position, and as far as you're concerned? Uh, my official position is that I am now joined the MPCT, and uh, we are actually preparing for um, the elections. And we are going to have a standing committee meeting on Saturday to fine tune our candidate selection template, primaries, etc., etc. So it is likely that I'm also going to be putting my CV to run under the party's name for uh, the 2018 harmonized election. Okay, and uh, uh, coming to you, uh, uh, Mr. Ka- Kagodara, your fa- your faction is accused of violence. You know, we look at Buhera, we look at Bulawayo and so forth. What is your posi- what's your response in as far as that is concerned? First of all, let me just thank you ZFA, ZFA uh, FM for having us. Uh, thank you, Larry. Uh, good evening, viewers. Uh, I know uh, there is a perception that the MDCT as led now by Advocate Chamisa is violent. It's a perception. Because up to, up to now we still don't uh, know anyone who is in the MDC structure who is associated with what happened in, in, in Buhera or wherever violence is said to have been. So it's still hearsay. We have sent our security guys to deal with that and they have brought up a report which exonerates the MDC as the MDC structures. Because we have got no control over a person who is not in the structure. We have got control over people who are in the MDC structures. And if this violence was perpetrated by anyone outside the structure, the MDC has got nothing to do by beyond saying the police 
can arrest, make, make arrest the I think the need yours will have to make a police report so that the police can make arrest and the people will be charged according to the laws of the land. Uh, Ms. Bar- Ms. Masar- Masarada, what is your position in as far as that statement is concerned? Uh, can you come again? I didn't quite hear you. Yeah, what do you think of that statement? Uh, the, the other side says, no, we have nothing to do with violence. There's no violence within our structures in spite of the fact that uh, there have been accusations of that nature, not least from your, from, from your president. Um, sorry, the line was breaking a bit. Uh, can you come again? I was saying there have been. Uh, we were talking. I was talking to uh, Mr. Kagodo at this side and saying that, and he's talking about the fact that uh, within the, uh, the 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 NDCT uh, side led by uh, advocates Chamisa, there is no violence involved, uh, and he says that there is no violence that's involved. Is that the same position that you that you stand with? Uh, not at all. Not at all. We cannot say there is no violence when acts of violence were actually recorded by the media and videos of violence, and violence has always been occurring since Kanye Memorial. So then the question becomes, uh, uh, following that, is that oh, he says that none of the, the, the violence concerned is outside the control of, we'll call it that side of the faction. What are you saying as far as that is concerned, saying that the violence came from outside? How can the violence come from outside when when they were uh, party members were actually wearing t-shirts and were actually chanting their slogans on who had actually sent them to do the thing? So at the end of the day, I think it is premature for us to be discussing that there is no violence in the MDCT. Yet historically, we have had Elton Mangoma beaten up in other towns through disturbance and etc. etc. What is critically important is to acknowledge the errors that are in the party and to correct them, and then we move forward in unity, peace, and that is what is critically important. Rather than for us to be debating in this forum, that is it violent or not. We have seen acts of violence before. And now what we should be encouraging each other is we have to denounce violence, any form of violence against any party member. You're listening to ZFM Stereo, my station, your station, the hottest radio on time. Get in touch with us on 0731-168045. Now I'm going to ask you a question, uh, Ms. Masarira. The question is, have you uh, never at any point backed Advocate Chamisa? Pardon? Have you ever at any point backed Advocate Chamisa? Hi, Advocate Chamisa. Uh, uh, have you ever backed him at any point? Yes, I have. I, I, I have to pack them at some point. And then what happened now? It's, it's not particularly about what happened, but um, I think I had been clear, even on the tweet that I had spoken about that, I had reservations with his ascendancy to power. And when he fired Chogozani Kupi, I thought that it was an injustice when he recalled the vote from Parliament. And I even tweeted again and said, I think for now I have to follow the voice of reason. There was no point actually whatsoever to, to recall uh, Dr. Kupe from Parliament, from my own point of view, especially when it got an electoral amendment bill coming in. How then will you be able to get the support for the vote to ensure that the electoral reform bill comes through? So those are some of the critical issues that I was looking, I was looking at, that it was not a strategic move. And who was it going to benefit? Obviously, it will benefit Danupia, which already has a majority in Parliament. So when I looked at those issues, I thought that it was actually unjust. And I'm called for, and I even tweeted about that. That is when I say no. I think for now I have to look for people who actually resonate with the ideologies and values that I stand for, back them and support them, and work together as a team to ensure that we 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 we, we take Zimbabwe where they are supposed to be going, and to ensure that we achieve sustainable human development in this country. Sometimes we have to go beyond politicking because Zimbabwe has suffered enough for a very long time. We now need visionary leaders who can actually take them out of the quagmire that. They Okay, uh, Mr. K- Mr. Kagodera wants to respond to that. Just, uh, okay, Mr. Kagodera, let, let's, let's hear what you have to say. I, I think I can start by uh, uh, taking Linda through the processes of the National Council of the Movement for Democratic Change, which had recalled Kupe, meaning that Kupe had decided to be a member of the Movement for Democratic Change. At that point, there was no guarantee that whatever is going to come in the House, Kupe would be on the MDCT side. 
That is the first thing. And secondly, considering that Coupe was the leader of the opposition in the House, she had influence, she could have influence in the debating and in the way things would, uh, would shape in the House. And she had failed and refused to conform with what is specified for and expected of her if she had been fired by the Movement for Democratic Change. The Movement for Democratic Change says that if you are fired, there are mechanisms that she can deal with in trying to deal with her firing if she was not in agreement there is a tribunal that she could have appealed it to there is the national chairperson that she could have appealed it to there is the you know there are these internal processes and procedures that she could have dealt with but she had, she had failed to do that and so there was no guarantee that cooper would I, I know linda would want to give that as an excuse but there was no reason and no guarantee that cooper it would stand with the MDC position in Parliament. So to us, it was it was foregone. Cooper would stand by anybody that would uh, justify a stay in Parliament, and not the, not necessarily the movement for democratic change because she had been fired uh, by the MDC. I want to ask you this, uh, Leda, maybe, and you can respond to that. And as far as that's concerned, do you, yes, wo- I, I really want to respond to that. Thank you very much. Lady. Go ahead. Um, you find that um, Jobs in Ghana actually put in a post uh, on Facebook um, where uh, his uh, national executive member of um, the, the standard uh, MDC team came in into the public stating the obvious that Dr. Cooper is a hero of this struggle. It is the answer which shows that clearly there was no unison on the so-called expulsion from, 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 from the North and Shamisa camp. We take it as an affirmation that Dr. Cooper's leadership qualities and scholars and written confession that Dr. Cooper is actually the people's president. That was clear in the statement. Was it a popular decision within the rank and file of the Jamaica yeah. faction? That is what we have to interrogate critically. Yeah, if we can interrogate that, Mrs. Linda by the force that came in the National Council. Out of the 167 people who came to the National Council, about 145 voted for Coupe to be fired. So the, the, there's, no, there's, no, uh, we, there's no doubt about that. Yes, Job Scala might have a, spot, a soft spot of, over me, Madam Coupe, but that does not mean that the National Council was not in agreement because more than two-thirds of the members present voted that Coupe must be fired. So it's, it, we cannot debate on that. It's... It, it, it's, an, it's a position of the National Council, and that council is the one which made the resolution. And for Cooper to then defy that, that National Council resolution and take you as an, a spokesperson of a, of a party, considering that you are not, you were not prior to that, you were not in, in any structure in the MDC, TCT. there is no justification for, for her constitutionalism and the call for constitutionality that she has been calling about, she has been crying about. Oh seven three one one six eight zero four five. I got a message here, maybe directed at you. Uh, Linda says, "Kupe uh, Kupe will not get two percent of, of total votes. So what's the point of following her?" And that's coming on in the statement that the Chamisa side says, "We have the numbers. Do you have the numbers?" When, when we speak of numbers, I think everyone is got numbers. Yeah. Um, the sometimes numbers are deceiving. We saw in 2018 that all, all, almost all the rallies that were being held, MDCT had a lot of numbers, and there's still not elections. What is important is related to the issues that people have, and we all know that people go and vote secretly. Some people attend rallies just to get t-shirts. And what guarantee do we have that every person who's been attending that rally who is speaking to the numbers are actually registered voters? That is actually one of the things that we should be looking at. Everyone is going into this race to, to, to win the elections. Some will lose, some will win. So that is the, the main purpose and the sole purpose of elections. For me, when I look at it, there's no one who can who can stand and run for, for, a, for, for an idea and um, stand for certain and particular issues without numbers. And I think the Congress actually showed that there are people that actually support uh, Dr. Togozani Kupe because all 10 provinces were actually represented at the Congress on Saturday. So, uh, for me, I think it is folly to start talking about the numbers issue because why would you also have people that subscribe to her? So, at the end of the day, starting to talk about who's got numbers and everything else, that will be determined by the panel. Miss Linda, even the devil has got friends. But it doesn't mean that people, they have to follow the devil. You know? you saw, So, the, the situation here is, in as much as you might want to call to say you have the numbers, yes, numbers, uh, you might say they don't count. Uh, to us, numbers matter because it's, the MDC is a grassroots M, uh, movement 
it is a, a people's movement and it is the numbers that determines where we are going and secondly uh, the MDC for the past uh, rallies that we have held, we have never did out uh, any, 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 any regalia. So people are not coming there for t-shirts, they are coming there specifically because they support the movement. I want to ask you a question before I, I, I get uh, uh, later to come back into this, uh, Gilbert. The, 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 there is an accusation that stands that the, uh, your side of the faction as a roving support so you in the tendency of busing people to rallies so isn't that the same thing that uh later on the line could be saying okay you know what you're calling the, saying that you have these numbers but uh, they feel they that you uh, tend to bus people in i think let's let's start by larry by uh, trying to correct the person that perception that we are a faction we are the part we are the movement for democratic change People who are fired from the movement for, for democratic change, if they go out and claim to be the movement for democratic change, does not give them the right to be the movement for democratic change. That's that's the first point. And secondly, to just to answer your uh, your question, uh, numbers that we are seeing at the movement for democratic change rallies are quite huge. And uh, any party that can bust people to that mag- magnitude, uh, I think I think. Uh, they would be missing it somehow because that number the money that can be spent uh, to bus people can be used can be better used to set a certain other party activities so uh, I, I don't, there's no justification there's no justification to bus people from anywhere to go to Kondo in, in Spinge. there's no no justification to bus the same people to go to to uh, to Ruango in Yanga. You see, these are the people who are resident. If ever people are going to travel with the president, it's the national executive members and probably members of the National Council. These can travel to rallies with the president from time to time. 0731 uh, Linda, someone's asking, when, when did you become a member of the MDCT and how did you ascend to the position of spokesperson? <laughs> I joined the MDC in 2000, and I still have my card when I joined the party. And when I decided to leave government, there were a lot of issues that I was not subscribing to. And that is Liga Masarira. And um, what was the other part of the question? Uh, how did you ascend to the position of spokesperson? I was nominated at Congress. I was nominated and elected into the position. I actually went through the, the, the proper and normal channel of, um, of nomination and I was voted into by nine provinces out of ten. Okay, so the, 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 I, uh, guess, just, okay, just, I guess where the question is coming from, and I'll, I'll, get, I'll get you to come in from this question, is to say, uh, until two weeks ago, you were an independent candidate. Correct? Pardon? Until two weeks ago, uh, or until recently, you were an ind- independent candidate. Mm-hmm. So, having been an independent com- candidate and having for a long period proclaimed yourself an independent, not aligned to any p- political party, the question becomes were you still an MDC member but still running on an independent ticket to try to understand how it works? I think I answered that question. You asked me that question. I think that was the first question that I answered to that I'm going to be putting my CV for the candidate selection in the MDC. I think I've responded to that aspect. And the aspect of my changing my mind from being an independent candidate and running under a party ticket, I've, um, I, we should understand that politics goes on a daily basis. Politics is dynamic. And sometimes we have to make the best decision in our quest for nation building and having a common national vision. Uh, Linda, politics and leadership calls for people who are honest and who can tell pe- the people the truth. At one time, you, yes, you, you might have been MDC in 2000. At one point, you claimed that you are PDP. You move out from the PDP, you call yourself an independent, and you call yourself a supporter of Tamisa at one point, and then you go. So these are the genuine concerns of the people. If Dr. Cooper claims that she, is, she, 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 she dealt with the leadership crisis in the MDC, the MDC has a constitution, which, which stipulates how one can be elected into a national uh, standing committee position. And one has to be at a certain position for a period of time. Stipulated. For instance, for you to be in a, in a, in a standing committee, you have to be in at least a provincial executive position for at least five years prior to your 
uh, appointment or election. And in the absence of this, it, it shows that you, are, you did a very dubious thing that still needs to be interrogated by people outside there. Uh, okay, so before we take a break, right uh, I'll get you to respond to that. Everyone has got the right to demand questions from me, and I think for now it is premature for It's the people, Linda. It's the people. The people out there will demand questions. And I think that is a subject that we can discuss after we come from court tomorrow when we've got a judgment. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back. There are a couple of other issues that we want to talk about. And as far as this is concerned, we're still on until half past the hour of 8 o'clock. It's ZFM Stereo, my station, your station, the hottest radio in town. And remember, you can get in touch with us on our WhatsApp is 0731-168045. So, and also on Twitter at ZFM Stereo. On Facebook, just go to facebook.com for slash ZFM Stereo. Uh, keep the conversation going. And I can see already me- so many messages and so many questions for both of our guests in the studio which will be uh, addressing after the break as well as other issues and as far as this topic uh, topic is concerned it's zfm stereo my station your station the hottest radio in town here we go again enjoy world-class radio online zfm stereo is available on tune in search for zfm stereo and you got it always moaning about the state of our roads. Uh, Your Worship Bernard Manyanyani, thank you sir for coming through to the program. Are you receiving money from Zinara? And if you are, what are you using it for? Mm. The crisis we are facing in the last two, three years around portals firstly it's not a a problem of one city Mm -hmm. and secondly it's not a problem of last year or the year before. Mm. It tells the story of the eight or so years that funds have gone to Zinara and they don't come back to the roads. Mm-hmm. That's where that's where we are, where we are. The talk that gets you talking. Mondays to Thursdays between 6 p.m. and 9 p.m. The platform. Step, Step up. up and speak up. You tuned into ZFM Stereo, my station, your station, the hottest radio in town. The name is Larry Quidirai, and it is uh, the platform on Political Mondays back for another week. And we are talking about the issues within the MDCT. We've got two sides. Um, some they insist we're not a faction, but essentially, as it stands, there we've got uh, the Togo Zanukupe led MDCT faction, newly elected spokesperson Linda Masaidera, who's on the phone all the way from uh, Rulawaya, where she is and uh, a national executive member of the MDCT led uh, by advocate Chamisa here in the studio in Gilbert Kagodora. I'm going to ask you uh, a question, uh, Linda, coming to you. When you, where, where, where you, when you were present, uh, when, some, uh, uh, when some people, the question is, in fact, the question is, were you present when some people destroyed former President Robert Mugabe's portraits on, uh, what, was it 20, 21 November? Yes, I was in the hotel. And I should categorically state that I'm not the one who took the poster from the wall. I'm not the one who broke it. And I was there. The only time I took that portrait was after it was already broken, when I also wanted to to, 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 to vent out my anger that I had against Robert Mugabe. But um, I think it is actually folly and uh, immature for people to try and say I'm the one who pulled down that... Um, that poster because when it was pulled down I was not even there but I was in the hotel I only saw it after it had been broken Okay, so moving part to the way you're expressing your venting, your anger, and so forth. The question that will be asked, given the emotion you're going through there, why is it that now you're suing the government, alleging that Operation Restore Legacy was a coup? Can you come again? I didn't hear you quite clearly. Uh, given the emotion that you're talking about right now, the question that would follow is that why is it that you're suing the government, alleging that the Operation Restore Legacy was a coup? Was a coup? Yes, it was a coup. It was a coup. Yes, everyone wanted Robert Mugabe to go, but there was a bad president which was set, which has to be corrected for posterity. We had the chief justice situation coming out and constitutionalizing a coup. And as a concerned citizen of this country, I have every right to ensure that constitutionalism is followed and that a coup is actually called out as a coup as it is in the military intervention into a factional issue of ZANU-PF, which was not supposed to be done, was done unconstitutionally. Our constitution was violated by the army generals and that has to be corrected in our court of law. And our order in that application was clear that we need a national transitional authority to run the affairs of the country until we 
go to elections. We cannot go to elections which are presided over by the army, by the military, by the junta, which fly Guana in back. Those are critical elements that we have to look into when we, when we want to go for a free and fair and credible election. Those guys, those army generals, just did do a coup to let go of power in six months. And they are saying all the right things to the international community so that they can legitimize themselves and show that they are a new bridge of leadership. But I do not see that. I see a power-hungry military that actually wants to take its turn to loot and plunder the resources of this country. We saw it with Mary Chiwenga taking over Adda. We see the things that they are doing. They are doing the same things that Robert Mugabe was doing. Going with their whole families, clans and scabs to, 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 to China and, 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 and chattering I mean, a plane for 1.4 million. So uh, these people are just in there so, so, uh, for their own self okay. judgment and they will do anything to ensure that they win the election. But we are saying as the opposition, we have to ensure that we have non-partisan people running the election so that we can have at least have that credibility issue. Okay, I'm going to ask you a question as a follow-up. I've heard what you said. Uh, first of all, we talk about the military as if uh, the question becomes, are they not Zimbabweans? And what happens if some of them have resigned from the, gov- g- g- from the army? Does, not, does that not mean that them being uh, citizens, they can uh, engage uh, in uh, political affairs, given the fact that they've left the army? They left the army after they had, uh, I mean, after they had done the coup. But we are challenging the acts they did before they retired from the army. And when we speak of them retiring from the army, who saw their their retire? Their, I mean, their their letters of, res, of resignation. Who saw those letters? Who knows that they actually resigned from the army? For all we know, the vice president uh, Chiwenga is still the, the the defense minister. He still has control over the army. So we cannot uh, relax and say that they have got the right because they are Zimbabwean. So, so are okay, so let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Let, let, let me ask you a question. The, it, they, they came out on television. There were press conferences that were held. There were official documents that were sent out. Uh, how official would you want their resignation to be if it was put in the public domain and swearing in of new officials within particular particular positions was done? How official do you want it to be for them to have been stepped out of the... the, the, uh, the, the in, in, in the army's concerned? Uh, let's go deal with that, but then we carry on with the next issue. When they executed and plotted the coup, they were still serving members of the military. They were coup plotters who actually had a plan and they retired after they had executed their plan, which still delegitimized them. Okay, you listen to ZFM Stereo, my station, your station, the hottest radio in town. I've seen your messages coming in, but I want to ask now... now um, over the weekend, uh, coming back into the studio here, over the weekend, Advocate Chamisa said if the NBCT does not garner 70% of the 2018 vote, it is because of rigging. How did it get to that figure of 70%? Um, as, a, as a party, uh, through the, the, the process of the BVR process, we, we, we mobilized the people. We were with the people. When ZANU-PF was fighting, plotting coups and, and so forth, we were mobilizing. We were on, we were on the ground. And this is what gives us that confidence that at least we have the, the majority of those people have been mobilized by the MDCT. All that we just need to do is to deal with the elect- electoral management processes from within the party so that we ensure that the vote is secured. And maybe uh, just to answer, to, to, just to deal with the question, the, the military question that you, you, you posed to Linda. I'm in agreement with Linda on a, on a number of issues on this one. The, that was a coup. And for the military to, to, to say today they, they are in, a mili- mili- in their military jackets, tomorrow they are in civilian jackets, it's not proper. We need time. Time for the military when they resign. We need time so that we chlorinate the, we chlorinate the military of the local politics. Let's say if we give them two years, one resigns today, two years or more, then they can join civilian government. It is acceptable because they will no longer have more uh, enough influence over the, their subordinates. In this case, if Chiwenga, as Chiwenga has done, 
He leaves, he leaves the military today. Tomorrow is the Minister of Defense. He still has his, pro, his protégés. No, no, he, I, I get what you're saying. But, I mean, look, this is an issue that has gone prevaricated and, and discussed over a long period. I mean, the, the arguments have been made of the fact that uh, former generals and recent former generals in places like the UK and the USA serve quite easily uh, in, as, in as far as moving straight from, from the military straight, straight to government. So this isn't a discussion, I suppose, of a constitutionalism. I'm sure the and the Constitution doesn't really really say that oh, they can't move yeah. from one place. Oh, There's yeah. nothing illegal about one moving from a certain position to the S next. So certain but issues are um, issues of eth no, eth I mean, ethical, I mean, ethical it's behavior. It's a discussion yeah. That, yeah. That, you, that people will have. It's like morality. Okay. Somebody yeah. decides what it is. So we're talking about, in this instance, from a purely constitutional and legal point of view. Oh, yeah. Now, the thing I, I want to ask, um, coming back to you, you Linda, uh, are there any prospects at this stage of your faction joining hands with advocate Chamisa. Is that my question, Larry? Yes, is there a chance of you joining the other side with the advocate Chamisa at this point? I think um, any other um, conversation in relation to joining each other and everything else can only be done tomorrow after um, the, the High Court ruling because it is clear and evident that um, uh, Advocate Nelson Chamisa did not exhaust all the channels that were available for conflict resolution and they decided to do what they did. So from now on, I think we have to wait for the High Court ruling. After we've got the High, Lord, the High Court ruling, we have both parties, I think, they will come up with their own positions on how we are going to relate with each other. Does, does, does it then mean, mean, Linda, this is Gilbert asking you, does it then mean uh, you are going to, when, when you lose that's when you'll be in a position to concede and say let's work with Chami or advocate chamisa or when you are when you would have won you you'd say you guy you guys you come on our terms is it is it what you are looking at or you are looking at no, the best interest of the party at, don't or, what brings to my mouth <laughs> i am only saying that politics evolves on a daily basis and we cannot come up with a flat i, I mean a, 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 a resolution on how we are going to do things. Things actually evolve on a daily basis. So we are open to negotiations with any like-minded political party for us to work together and put the way forward to ensure that we build an inclusive, just and equal Zimbabwe. You're listening to ZFM Stereo, my station, your station, the hardest radio in town. It is indeed a heated discussion here. Uh, someone says, why can't all the NBC parties unite to form one party? Uh, I know that somebody that's WizTech Z uh, getting in touch. Get in touch with me on 0731-168-045. Uh, somebody says, uh, why... Uh, the, the, uh, says this question uh, the Cooper camp should find their own name not the MDCT that's Elton JT Airbase query now for both sides I'm gonna ask first of all uh, I'm gonna start with uh, with, with Leonard on, on the phone why is it why why do you have to you have that 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 that, uh, that name as a party hello Yes, somebody's asking, say, why don't you get your own name as a, uh, find your own name rather than use MDCT? And uh, why do they want us not to use that name when Dr. Togozani Kupe was the elected VP at Congress and the Constitution was clear that there should be an extraordinary Congress after the death of a leader and that uh, the uh, acting of uh, the vice president would act as president until an extraordinary Congress is held to elect another leader? Uh, Madam Linda, I think you are not aware of the provisions of the MDC Constitution. The MDC Constitution. I know that yeah. The well, MDC Constitution. The well. MDC. I've read okay. through it. I have read it. Okay. So Listen to me. Okay. About All right. The Constitution right now because okay. the issue is in court. Let, 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 let's. Okay. The MDC Constitution states that there shall be vice presidents, not one president. And in the absence of a clear successor to the late which, president which, which version of the constitution are you subscribing to? the one you that we amended after you were not part of the 2014 congress you were not part of the 2014 congress the 2014 congress this resolved speaking looking at the constitution that was a, that was being used that was adopted in 2014 which particular version of the constitution are you alluding that 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 version that we we, we amended in 2014 it is it it has got provisions for for vice presidents and those vice presidents one of them can then ascend in the president in, in the event of incapacitation of of the incumbent and 
in the absence of the clear a, a clear successor the national council of the movement for democratic change set and then made a resolution it made a resolution that mr chamis our our, our 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 president now should lead the movement for democratic change until up, up until then we, we we hold a national congress which is due next year because it is due next year and in the meantime it, he was given a mandate to lead the party and also to be the the, the, the president of to, 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 be, to be the presidential candidate so mrs cooper should have just listened to the national council resolution and not go no, you, there is no there's nothing in the constitution that says one is elected and one is appointed I, you, I, 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 I might want to be told of that particular section of the of, 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 of the constitution okay i, I think this matter as 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 uh, uh Masada said on the phone that it's before uh, the courts. Let's see. Oh, yeah. let, let, let's do. I, I, we could argue until the cows come home, and the court comes in tomorrow and says something completely different. I want to get back to uh, this other issue, in as far as uh, the NBCT, uh, either side. If you win or lose, is, uh, say, say there's a win or a lose, whatever happened, uh, is either side open to a power sharing deal with ZANU PF, starting with you, Kagodora? Yeah. A power sharing deal depends on the level of winning. If we win a majority, there must be a transitional process, a, a, a power handover process, which needs to be guaranteed by the international community in this sense. Was after our previous uh, experiences, we have seen that these guys are not prepared to hand over power, if, whether they lose or what. So, it. Uh, the level of which we would have won if we win by 49 51 percent or so it is difficult to throw away the 49 percent of either political party that would have had 41 percent we would need to incorporate them in government this is what this is my view and i'm sure in that must also apply to any other party that wins with a small margin because there is need to uh, bring the people together so that we, we we move forward but if there is a clear majority then that party that would have won must be given the chance to at least lead. So then the follow-up question, you're saying that if Zanubiev gets 50% plus 1 or 51% plus 1 or 51%, they should join with the MDC for a... In the event that the MDC has got about 49%, that is if the MDC is more like. This is what, this is what I think. Okay. Uh, and your end, uh, in as far as that uh, topic is concerned, Masara? Uh, Linda, are you there? Hello. Yes, so the, the, the line was breaking. Can you come again? Okay, the question were, they were, uh, the, that was asked is to say, would you be open, if, in the event of you winning or losing, would you be uh, open to a power-sharing deal with uh, ZANU-PF? Um, in all honesty, if we win with 50 plus 1%, why would we go into a power-sharing um, 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 arrangement? Because at the end of the day, we have to clearly... Uh, spell out the problems that we're having in this country. They are clearly political, and most of the problems that the masses are facing in Zimbabwe are because of Zanu PF's inconsistency. So there is clearly no reason of, of going into power sharing deal with the people who have actually run down the economy in this country. But if, if it comes out, you know, in a, in a particular manner where uh, maybe um, we, we we've got a substantive amount uh, in votes maybe about 40 or so percent and everything and maybe we've got 33 40 and whatever and we're going to run off i think then we'd have to to, to, to negotiate so that the opposition actually wins the the, 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 the the election that is what is critically important we can differ on opinion but we've got the permanent interest that i think all, everyone in the opposition says that we have to remove the nuclear from power at all costs and usher in a new leadership in zimbabwe that is reactive and responsive to the people's needs that is what is cri critically important yes we might differ from opinion we can differ from ideology but when it comes to the runoff i see everyone in the opposition rallying behind one person and that is what is critically important for us 
what you're going to a JNU is a folly. We saw what happened in, in, 20, in 2009. The, the opposition was diluted by the, by the JNU. And I don't think that we can go back to the same negative, repetitive behavior of having Danu Kiev actually calling the shots and being the husband in a JNU and trampling upon the, the real voice of the opposition. So what is critically important when we get there is that the opposition will have to stand as one and fight Danu Kiev and remove it completely from power. And it can also happen before the election. Okay, I, I was going to ask that uh, about that. And uh, coming back here to, 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 to Gilbert in the studio, what if we look at pro, uh, professor, Welsh, professor Welsh, Welsh will be in the NBC Alliance. We're looking at Tind- Tindai B2 was sacked by the PDP recently. And an unhappy transform Zimbabwe. What are they bringing to the alliance going forward? Um, this, we are talking of people who have got, who have got diff- different skills. Yeah. Uh, in the governance, Professor Wasman and Mr. Tendaibiti has got a capacity in international relations, something that the MDC cherishes to have, and we still feel they are bringing in a lot into this into, into this uh, alliance. We have got uh, the Transform Zimbabwe guys; those guys have got the, the Christian voice, they, they've got the Christian vote, which everyone else would need. We are actually saying more. We are actually pleading to more of these uh, Christian begged movements or parties to join hands with the MDC Alliance so that everybody, I think everybody in Zimbabwe, with a country that has got 70% of its citizens being Christians, we need that Christian part of the, of the vote. So uh, then I ask on uh, on the other side that uh, the Chamisa faction, for example, accuses Dr. Kupe of trying to split the opposition vote in the upcoming uh, elections. First of all, is that true, uh, Linda? Can you come again, Larry? Sorry for that. The Chamisa faction accuses uh, Dr. Kupe of trying to split the opposition vote in the upcoming elections. Is that true? Honestly speaking, in a democracy. Every person has got the right to freedom of assembly and association. We can't be crying or speaking of vote. We cannot be, um, um, I mean, and I'm lamenting about that. What is critically important is so, so then the, the question then uh, we haven't asked this, there's an alliance that's being formed here. They're saying we're putting, getting everybody together and so forth and, co- you know, coalescing a huge vote. Uh, what sense does it make when some people feel that, okay, for example, all your party's activities are, uh, for, are seen as being confined to Matevele land, and that's a huge uh, factor in as far as the coming vote is concerned, in as far as your okay. quest to remove ZANU-PF? The phone is breaking. Can you come again, Larry? I think the, the network is going down again. Okay, so saying that there's no intention to split votes and things of that nature, and act- seeing your activities being largely in Matevele land, and some people feeling, Uguti, well, you know, whatever you get there is going to, to, to break up the vote that the alliance is trying to get. What do you, what do you say when, when accusations of that are levelled against you? In all honesty, we have to look at the critical issues um, that are important. The critical issues that um, Dr. Cooper's MDC team is speaking to is inclusivity. We need inclusivity. And I think there are also questions I raised about the alliance uh, since it was formed. Where are the women? Where are the youth? The youth actually constitute 67% of the population. We cannot continue with this uh, vicious cycle of exclusion, which is critically important. We believe in leadership renewal. We, we need renewal of leadership. But if we're going to go on with the same thing, that we actually castigate at Zanu PF of people overstaying as MPs, overstaying as senators, as councillors, we're not doing justice for the young people in Zimbabwe. So we are saying, let's converge at the level of ideas. Let's criticize each other at the level of ideas and, 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 and tolerate each other on the level of ideas. The, 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 I mean, the point that the MDC Alliance failed to be inclusive in issues especially to do with gender equality of which I'm not saying every woman should just be elevated because they are a woman but we've got a lot of women in Zimbabwe who are intelligent who, who can actually put in more value into the alliance which are just segregated but we are saying we want 50-50 gender equality as enshrined in the constitution of Zimbabwe and I think Dr. Tokozani Kupe, Dr. Tokozani Kupe's MGCT has managed to do that the standing committee has got 50-50 gender equality 40 percent youth in the in the, in the standing committee and i think that is the first in africa as a whole but we are saying to Kar- Patina, 
uh, I mean, that politics of patronage you have read to have so many years and whatever. We will never get to a stage where we give young people the, 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 the capacity for them to lead, to bring in those new and fresh ideas in this technological era. We cannot have the reactions coming in and they do not understand anything about the technology. Because we're 20 years backward when it comes to technology. But we are saying, let's also groom second and third level leadership so that we continue having a cycle of renewal of leadership, which many of many parties have failed to do. So we are saying we need renewal of leadership. We don't always have to have the same people because they are occupying the high post in the party. We have to show the, our difference, the courage to be different from the nuclear tactics and show the way that this country is supposed to be running. Okay, so before we go, uh, response uh, to that from you, uh, Kagodera? Yes, uh, I think it also falls, uh, Linda, or follows that Dr. Tokozani Kupe, as a member of the Standing Committee of the Movement for Democracy, was at one of the that was one of the highest positions that people had, and uh, uh, she was in the presidency. She was in the presidium of the MDCT, so she could she could determine the the the. The, the, direct, the direction the party could, could could go. But the time that she uh, barred Mr. Changirai's number from phoning her, that's when women were not represented in the highest level in the movement for democratic change. Because she had that uh, she had that potential, she had that capacity, she had got that she had that leverage as a, a, one of the people who could influence Mr. Changirai and the National Council's decisions. So when if she failed you as a national executive member, why didn't you ensure that section fifty six of the constitution of this country was actually protected and respected? But as a, as a movement, we, we gave her time. We wanted to engage because we, we believe in inclusivity. We could not, we could not make a decision long then to, 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 to remove her, to remove her from the party or for, to, to bring her, to, to humiliate her in the way that she has decided to humiliate herself. We wanted to include her in our processes. That's why she had been kept for this long. Okay, uh, we, I think we could go on and talk and talk until, the, to, uh, as they say, the proverbial cows come home. Thank you very much. On the phone, uh, Linda uh, Masarira, Masarira, who is the uh, the uh, newly elected spokesperson for the Togo Zanukupe-led MDCT faction. Thank you very much for joining us and do get well soon. You're very welcome, Larry. Thank you for having us on your program. And then uh, coming up, uh, we also want to say thank you to uh, Mr. Gilbert Kagodera, who is the national executive member uh, from the MDCT, led uh, by advocate Nelson Chamisa. We're hoping by tomorrow we'll be able to have a final position, and as far as this name is concerned, after this court has spoken. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Thank you. You're welcome, Larry. Good night. All right, so that's it for this week's episode of uh, Political uh, Mondays on uh, the platform. And uh, I'll be back with you tomorrow on Health Matters. And the day after, we'll be also on uh, I'll be on uh, the platform once again. But I say take care of yourself and the people that you love. Uh, stay tuned to ZFM Stereo. Coming up, with Ch- is, coming up now with Chila with our story. And as I always say, where I come from, take care of yourself.